Hi friends, my name is Sarah, and I'm currently the Intentional Interim Minister with St. Andrew's United Church in Lacombe, Alberta. If you're watching this video, it means that you received the link via the email letter that I sent out to the St. Andrew's Community of Faith. Or you might have found it via our website, or our Facebook page, or even this channel itself. No matter how you found your way here, welcome. My husband John has graciously shared his YouTube channel, The Accessible Faith Project, with us during this time of pandemic as a way and place to share my weekly reflections with you. There are other videos on this channel which are an opportunity to learn more about the Bible, faith questions, and the like. If you'd like to receive notifications of when new videos are posted, you can do so by clicking on the little bell icon that says subscribe and signing up. It's completely free. Our passage for this morning from Genesis chapter 28 recounts Jacob's dream and his awakening to God's presence. Jacob is a trickster, a heel in the truest sense of the word, and he begins this story utterly alone. He's fleeing to escape his brother Esau's wrath after deceiving him twice. First, as we heard about last week for finagling Esau's birthright, and then in the passage in between, stealing Esau's blessing in chapter 27. As the story begins, the sun has set and it is nighttime. It's a time of danger, of vulnerability and of mystery. Jacob has come to a certain place and he takes a stone for a pillow. And then he goes to sleep and has one of the most famous dreams in history. The dream begins dramatically as we behold in increasing amazement the revelation of God. Behold a ramp. Behold the angels. Behold the Lord. And angels ascend and descend the ramp or the ladder, indicating that there's a constant connection and presence between the two realms. It's telling us that the spiritual is greatly present in the material, and God is in both. God is present. God then speaks to Jacob, repeating the blessings and promises of land and descendants given previously to his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac. And these promises are very personal. God promises God's presence directly and ardently to Jacob, saying, Behold, I'm with you. And Jacob's response is what I call an aha moment, an awakening, a time where he realizes that God is in this place and I did not know it. He has awoken both literally and figuratively to a profound paradigm shift and he has come to a new understanding of himself and his relationship with God. The critical difference in this verse and in Jacob's life is not that God suddenly became present to Jacob. Rather, the difference was that Jacob finally became present to God. Rabbi Harold Kushner says, Now Jacob begins to ponder the events of his life in a new way and says to himself, If God was here and I didn't know, then perhaps God has been other places also. Awakening to a new identity and a new way of seeing oneself is one of the themes of the Disney movie Cars 3. For those of you who might not be familiar with the film, this installment continues the story of the legendary Lightning McQueen and how he is suddenly pushed out of the sport that he loves. To get back into the game, he will need the help of trainer Cruz Ramirez and inspiration from the late Doc Hudson. With their help and with the input from others, Lightning has his own aha moment, where he realizes that his destiny isn't about being the fastest car, but rather about being a mentor and a teacher to others. Now, what does one do after one is awakened? Clearly, the answer should be to make some sort of response. So did Jacob? Well, not really right away. Astoundingly, 
Jacob goes back to sleep after his life-changing encounter with God. And I'm not really sure what to make of that. He has this incredible dream. He gets promises from God. He has a paradigm-shifting experience. He awakens to God's holy presence in him, with him, and all around him. And then he decides to go back to sleep. Maybe he wanted to see, if he lay down for a while, that this strange feeling might go away. But it didn't. And so when he arises in the morning, he responds to God's presence with an action and with a vow. It was kind of a family thing, apparently. For following encounters with God, Abraham made altars and planted three trees, which we hear about in Genesis 21. And Isaac made altars and dug wells, which we hear about in Genesis 26. And Jacob set up pillars, and then he anoints them. And Jacob names the place Bethel, which means house of God. Literally, Beth El, house God. And then Jacob vowed a vow. And he will repeatedly stumble and fail at keeping his vows throughout the remainder of his story, which we will hear in the coming weeks. But in this moment, in the afterglow of his awakening to the presence, personal presence of God, we're going to take him at his word. God is now my God to Jacob. And now he will turn his attention to trying to live a Latin phrase, coram Deo, which means to live his life in such a way that everything gives glory to God. Jacob's awakening teaches us that no matter who we are, or how estranged from God that we may feel, or how dark our spirit may be, God is seeking to stand beside us and to bless us with God's presence. Our task is to lay our head on the altar, to become vulnerable enough to allow God through all of our defenses. God might come in visions, or in words, or in dreams, or in nudges, and we can choose to ignore them and to stubbornly stay asleep. Or we can choose to awaken to the awesome and fearful and wonderful mystery and have our world completely rocked. This kind of profound spiritual transformation is a daunting challenge for any of us who are logical, rational, and yes, I'm going to say traditional mainline types, but it is the sure path to the heart of God. Surely, as Jacob said, God is in every place, but admittedly, we have not done a very good job of helping people learn to perceive that. And so, friends, I believe it's time for an awakening, a great awakening. God is present in this place, whether that be your home or your car, but also in every place, waiting for us, like Jacob, to awaken, to be present to God, to realize God was there all along, and then to live our lives in such a way that they reflect that belief. May it be so. Amen.